What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing back a deck profile that inadvertently got hit on the ban list. And I know Konami didn't mean to do it, but they did it. Cause Tenki going to one means we have less ways to search Yosenjus. Yes, so we're doing a Yosenju deck profile in today's video. I'm excited to show you guys. I think it's a really cool profile. I've been testing it out for a while. I had like four or five different builds of this and I kept testing, kept testing until I brought to you guys or tried to bring you guys the best possible build I could think of. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and like the video if you guys do enjoy. I completely said that completely differently than how I usually say, please like and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, since you guys are here, you guys might as well subscribe, am I right? All right, so thank you guys all for watching. I really hope you guys do enjoy. And with that, on to the video. Okay, so to get into the deck profile, we are starting off with Triple Yosenju, comma 1, Triple Yosenju, comma 2, Triple Yosenju, comma 3, and Double Yosenju Sujik. Now, if you guys have ever watched any of my Yosenju deck profiles, this ratio has always been the same. I will not change this ratio. I think these are the best Yosenjus hands down, unless sometime down the line, we get some new Yosenju monsters that act like the commas and synergize like the commas. A lot of the problem with the new Yosenju support is it doesn't really synergize that well with these. And these are just effectively the best ones, to be honest with you. I'm going to explain their effects real quick, even though I'm sure we all know them by now. But comma 1 lets you bounce a card. Comma 2 lets you attack directly. Comma 3 lets you search when you do battle damage. And then Sujik is pretty much an honest for the deck. Now, they also all share the same effect where at the end phase they come back to your hand. And that's really relevant because it lets you play cards that other decks might not be able to play. And so I, that's why I think this deck is really, really cool. Now, yes, the balance hurt with Tanky going to one. But what it did do is open up some doors to play some new trap cards in the deck that I'm going to get into when I get into. But when Tanky is still fine, I don't think this deck is so, so bad just with Tanky going to one. Of course, Tanky at three was really good because you could search your commas. The thing is, though, what I like about Tanky at one now, funny enough, it's going to sound stupid, but it's, it's kind of funny, is that because you're playing such a high monster count, especially for a trap deck, this is considered a high monster count. That one tanky is not that bad. You have a lot of drop power, so we are playing double duality and triple extravagance. So you have a lot of drop power. You can get into your Yosenjus fast, and even if you don't get into your Yosenjus, your trap cards are going to hold you down until you do. And then these are pretty much your win con, right? So there's still a lot of playability with this deck. Don't get me wrong. Now I don't think this is going to be the best deck in the game, but I definitely think this deck is competitive still, and you can play this like at a level where you you can kind of enjoy yourself and not necessarily lose to everything right so i think this deck is still pretty pretty good we are playing one double or nothing of course this is your main link con and i'll show you guys and i'll explain that in a little bit but i'm going to show you guys how pretty much once you set up your first turn board on your next turn assuming you have the right pieces you can otk with this card that's why i think this deck is really really cool because you have so many different win cons right this being one of your best win cons but of course the essential monsters themselves do a bunch of poke damage you also have cowboy i'm gonna get into that when i get into that but there's just so many ways to win with this deck right then we are playing one called by the grave of course then also we are playing a bunch of traps as you guys can see we're playing a ton of traps and these are pretty much the best traps in the game at the moment so triple torrential tribute triple imperm triple solemn strike Triple Rivalry, Triple Judgment, Triple Punishment, Double Drowning Mirror Force, and one Macro Cosmo. So I know I went through that really quick. Let me explain why I picked my choices and why I have these cards in here. Now, trust me guys, when I say this, I actually tested this deck for a long time. There's like four different builds of this deck that I had. And I was like, okay, let me keep trying. Let me keep playing with ratios, adjusting ratios. And then this is what I came up with for the final. And I think this deck is really, really good. Now, so Torrential Tribute is kind of self-explanatory in the sense of like all your Yusenju monsters come back to your hand at the end phase. So you're never really going to be playing with boards where you have monsters on your side of the field unless really you're going for game, right? So the nice thing, especially because you want to go first with this deck, this deck does struggle a little bit going second. Now you have traps like Strike that help make it a little bit easier. But I just wanted to say something like Torrential is always pretty much live in this deck, right? So Torrential is really, really good, of course. Breaks your opponent's boards, stop your opponent from going out too far, like extending too far, I should say. So Torrential is really, really good. Imperm, of course, is pretty much the only hand trap you're really playing, but it as a trap card itself is really, really good. Being able to lock out a spell trap zone is also really strong. Triple Strike. Strike is hands down probably the best trap card in the game right now. Just being able to stop monster effects, it's good going first and going second. Stop summons. This card is really, really good. You have Triple Rivalry. Now, Rivalry was one of those cards where I'm like, do I want to play it? Do I not want to play it? And then I just found so many situations where I'm like, when I flip Rivalry, Yes, don't get me wrong, sometimes your opponent can play through a rivalry to a certain extent, but it makes them do all these awkward and complicated things where you're in a position where it's like, okay, now you do this like weird play, weird combo. So in terms of card advantage, this card is really good because 
not only does it stop your opponent or, or, or I guess disrupt your opponent, but it's also like, okay, even if your opponent does have some sort of out to it, they're going to have to use multiple cards and it just card advantage wise, you're just so good. Triple Judgment. I didn't play Judgment at first. I was so on and off. Like I, I played it, then I didn't play it. And then with Judgment, the thing is, I realized like sometimes being able to Judgment a key effect just outright wins you the game, right? Sometimes your opponent just passes when you flip a Judgment and then you can just go for OTK from there. So that's why I think Judgment is really, really good. Then obviously triple punishment. Now punishment is actually the last addition to my deck. What I was actually playing instead of punishment, I'll let you guys know real quick, is I was playing double summoning curse and triple drowning mirror force, right? But I cut the double summoning curse and I cut mirror force down to two and then played triple punishment because I realized I'm like, wait, punishment is just so strong. You just punishment, it's a free pop too. Like that's so crazy, right? And sometimes doing that just on your opponent's turn is kind of like, okay, now they have to pass on this like suboptimal board. And again, when you have cards like double or nothing, Utopia double, you're just going for OTK after that. So that's why I thought Punishment, you know what? I'm going to put it in. We played it. I play tested it. And I was like, okay, this card is pretty, pretty good, right? So I decided to play Punishment. Now, again, I want to come down to Summoning Curse. Now, Summoning Curse is one of those cards that I thought was really cool. If you guys don't know the effect, I'll read it for you because I'm pretty sure I'm covering half the effect. But it says, if a monster is special summoned, the current controller of that monster banishes one card from their hand. So they have to have a card in their hand to even be able to special summon right and then do it once per turn during your end phase you pay 500 life points or destroy the card it's fine you can pay 500 life points to keep the card on the field right now this card is really good it's one of those really really powerful floodgates however i just found it a little bit gimmicky so the reason it works in your deck of course is because all the yosenjus are normal summons like will they activate their effects to normal summon the next one so this works really really strongly in your deck it kind of has the same stipulation as rivalry where it's kind of like okay my opponent has to go into phoenix has to discard a card pop it like it's and by that time they're discarding a bunch of cards because they have to be special summoning so summoning curse has a really cool effect the only reason i think it's gimmicky and the only reason i don't think it's that great and i chose not to play now if you guys want to test it out yourselves you guys definitely can this card is great but the reason i chose not to finally was because i was like it's a spell card so you have to really draw it going first Okay, so you have to draw it going first, you have to activate it going first, and now your opponent knows what they're playing against, so they can play around it, if that makes sense, or play through it, you know what I mean? Whereas trap cards, like trap cards, your opponent doesn't know what you have set. Your opponent doesn't know what could be flipped at any moment. This card is kind of like, I have to go first, I have to draw it, and then once I draw it, I have to activate it, so now my opponent knows what he's playing through kind of thing, right? So this card is really, really good, but just on a competitive level, when you want to play against those like high tier players, high tier events, like, you know, something like Summoning Curse is, is really good in the early rounds, but then later on when people start to get better and you start playing more like competitive players, they know what to play through. They know how to play through these kind of things because they see what's going on. Whereas when you're flipping a rivalry, first of all, rivalry plus strike breaks a lot of boards as well going second, right? So these two cards just work hand in hand. Whereas this card is kind of like it just sits there, right? So this card is really good. Don't get me wrong. It's a great, great floodgate. It's one of those really, really good cards in my opinion, but it's just kind of one of the things where, especially if you don't draw it first, like, what are you doing with it? Like, going second, it doesn't do anything for you. Even on top of going second, even if you do go first, if you draw it turns three, turns four, it doesn't matter anymore, right? That's why I just didn't like this card so much. And then, yeah, like I said, Punishment is really good. Drowning Mirror Force, of course, is really good because all your just come back to your, to your hand on your end phase. So this this card is actually sometimes just complete blowout. So I love this card so much. And then one Macro Cosmos. Now, you guys can see that I'm not playing Imperial Order. You guys can definitely play Imperial Order if you wanted to. And the reason for that is because cards like Double or Nothing are kind of like your win condition in the deck. And you kind of have a problem where it's like you have an IO on the field, but then you're trying to win, but now you can't Double or Nothing because IO. And then now you're in an awkward position where it's like, okay, well, now how do I play, right? So don't get me wrong. IO is a great, great card. And if you chose not to play Double or Nothing, now I know this card is kind of a brick, but it's another win con for the deck, right? And it's one of your best win cons in my opinion. So that's why I'm like, okay, it doesn't synergize that well. I don't want to be put in those random positions where I have IO on the field and I have like an extrav in my hand or I draw an extrav or I draw a duality or I draw a double or nothing. And then you're like, eh, what do I do here? Right? So double or nothing and stuff is just too powerful for me not to be able to activate it. That makes sense. So that's why I chose not to play IO. However, Macrocosmos is a great, great card. Banishing all cards that go to the graveyard is insane in a lot of against a lot of decks, I should say. Like, this is crazy, right? Especially because your cards aren't really going, your monsters especially are not really going to the graveyard unless you're using them for your utopia monsters but at that point you're winning anyways right so for the extra deck of course like i said we're just loading up on utopia monsters here triple utopia double triple utopia the reason for that is because you're playing extravagance of course so you're just maxing out on these we're playing one utopia the landing just in case for some way some reason 
you banish your Utopia doubles or you banish your Utopias. So you're playing Utopia the Lightning. So it's just kind of like one of those backup things where somehow, some way, you banish three of this or three of this, then you make Utopia the Lightning. And then you have Utopic Future here, Utopic Draco Future. Now you might be wondering, how do you get into these cards, right? Well, you have play stuff like Tornado Dragon, Double Gaga Cowboy. If you see yourself in a position where you kind of are like, okay, I can't win, or I banished my, my Utopias or whatever the situation is. So sometimes you can make a Tornado Dragon, make a Cowboy, burn your opponent, pop up a card and then once you pop a card you just make these two into Uto uh, f0 and then f0 into utopic draco future right so that's why just another like win con or another thing that you can sit on with this deck that's why i like this deck so much is because you have so many different ways to win on top of your extra deck if you like blank your opponent's field with like a drowning mirror force and you just summon like four us Andrew monsters you pretty much have game anyways because then you can just do a bunch of damage and then go cowboy for game sometimes you can go double cowboy for game it's kind of broken like there's 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 ways that happens right so that's why this deck is really really cool and then triple entis of course for the punishment because pop two is just so so good so that is it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed i know i went a little bit in depth with it but i just wanted you guys to understand why i chose what i chose and throughout all my testing why i made my final decisions to build it this way now i think this deck is really fun i think it can be competitive you guys can want to go to a locals with the yosenju build i think this could be really fun really good and can get you some surprise wins out of nowhere so thank you guys all for watching i really do hope you guys did enjoy with that spanko sign and out peace